Welcome back to the DVDVR March Madness 2016 Bracket Reveal. Ultimate Survival continues with the reveal of the Jumbo Saruta Bracket. And the conclusion of this will be halfway through revealing our field. Just some reminders, this year's field is 96 people deep. We're going big. It's got men, women, and children, or groups, whatever you prefer. It's a single elimination tournament, and you're going to be basically working on a time period of matches from March 1st, 2015 to February 29th, 2016. I'm not your dad, so I can't tell you exactly what you're going to do, though. On to the matchups. In this bracket, we start off with Jimmy Rave single-handedly dominating the Southern Indie scene. If you haven't been watching him, you're really missing out, and an amazing time is being had. He gets to take on Phoenix, who is somehow only 25, and I hate his youth. The winner of this matchup is going to take on Kevin Owens. Stormed into WWE this year from NXT, is already a three-time champion, thanks to terrible booking, but that's a different story. The next matchup, Johnny Gargano. He's one of our last eight. He was number six. He managed to make it in the tournament, and all you need is a chip and a chair. He's taking on Tyler Breeze, the man who definitely wishes he was back in NXT. Can his good work in NXT eliminate the bad work in the WWE main roster? The winner of that matchup is going to take on Shinjaki Nakamura, our reigning champion. Before the taint of the WWE gets on him, does he have enough to repeat this year? Moving on, Rush. And stop trying to make Rush happen, people. It's Rush. His name is Rush. Why he hasn't been signed by the WWE is beyond me. Attractive. He's got the WWE body. He's charismatic. I don't know. Maybe they have a quota. They can only have two at a time or something. But eventually he'll get the call and then we'll all be sad. He takes on Matt Seidel, such a good wrestler with such a punchable face and stupid haircut. They will take on Will Ospreay, just like the bird. One of the best flyers around. He had an amazing year for, you know, UK Indies, PWG. He's going to supposedly wrestle in the New Japan unless, you know, you believe TNA. But why would you believe TNA? Next matchup, Sammy Callahan. Coming off his run as Solomon Crow in NXT, Callahan's already come back to the indie scene and started to just put on tremendous matches. But is that enough for him to be able to beat his opponent? Okada! Well, alone, on jacket alone, he will not be able to. But can you get over your New Japan bias to be able to give this a fair consideration? We'll see. The winner of this match takes on Dragon Lee. Oh, this is going to be great. So much good Dragon Lee. I don't care if you hate Le Lucha. Watch Dragon Lee matches. Next matchup. Baron Corman. Indie hater galore. Is really coming to his own this year. And as you'll be told 3,000 times, he used to play football. He takes on Kenny Omega, the cleaner. Is he the man to lead New Japan to the future? We're going to find out, but that mostly is not in this time period. So, let's see. Can he move on and take on Dean Ambrose? Yeah, pretty much rewarded Dean Ambrose for being one of the few guys to not be hurt in the WWE to give him a buy into the second round. Plus, dating Renee Young. Khan, well, besides his stupid rebound lariat, he you know roots for both the Bengals and the Flyers, so clearly he is as crazy as his character. We have Ultimo Guerrero. I'm definitely rewarding him for having to wrestle Thunder so many times. That alone got him a spot in here just because poor, poor Ultimo Guerrero. He takes on Hideki Suzuki. Well, you've probably not watched a single match as Hideki Suzuki this year, so you're going to have to change that before the voting opens. They will, the winner of that match takes on Miko Satamora. <laughs> oh, will she wreck you? Possibly wrestler, women's wrestler of the year? I don't know who's to say. All I know is she's still crushing it in her 40s, and you don't really want to meet her in a back alley. Neville makes it back in again. 
Last year he made it all the way to the Sweet 16. This year, well, he had a cape for a while. Now he doesn't have that even. But is that enough? Maybe he can. Maybe he can. He takes on Becky Lynch. I call her a modern day Sting because she's as dumb as Sting was. And, you know, for a standard set for WWE baby faces, she was at the top. That doesn't mean she didn't have an amazing match all throughout the time period. The winner of that matchup takes on Timothy Thatcher. If there was a dream wrestler for me, it would probably be Timothy Thatcher. So much technical wrestling. Maybe not your cup of tea, but does that mean you're not going to vote for him? We move on to the Wyatts. Yeah, they're all in as a group. It's pretty much Luke Harper dragging them on. Will that be enough? King Cuerno, who legitimately is the face of Lucha Underground. They, in their intense battle, will face the Lucha Dragons. Sin Cara gets rewarded for, well, not crippling himself this year. And Kalisto has started to get his singles run. Together, they move on and show up together. Will that be enough to justify their buy? We'll find out. That's it. We're halfway through. Check us out and come back and visit us when the other two videos hit.